This video is going to sound mean. Nier Automata's anime has already tripped down multiple flights of stairs, and now, here I am, kicking the shit out of it while it lays prone. I was really excited for this game to be adapted, not because I wanted to see the game on screen, but because I knew there was no way Yokotaro would let it just be the game on screen. He's a super busy guy, having spent the last few years as creative director for three voice of card games, three mobile games, and a bunch of other big and small projects. So why would he take up yet another role to work on the script of the Nier Automata anime just to say, make it exactly the same? No, it's a genuine reinvention, and while it does adapt the main beats, it also intertwines stories from the stage play, from Near Replicant, and some events play out in different ways entirely. It's exciting, a brand new Near that provides a new experience to existing fans, rather than just giving us a worse way to get through a story that was originally rooted within its medium. Or rather, it would be exciting, if it wasn't for the fact that the production keeps imploding. The cracks were showing as early as episode 1. It's customary for an action animator debut with one big fight scene. A flashy sequence by a top animator that introduces the main character's abilities. And while we got that, you could already feel the choppiness, the inconsistent jumps between poses, the timing that fails to draw you in. As I said, mean video, but Nier Automata's animation being unimpressive ends up feeling more disappointing than something like Tomo Chan is a girl belly moving. Any motion in a manga adaptation is going to be more than there was before, but the Nier Automata anime team had the misfortune of adapting the work of some of the greatest games animators working in the industry today. No matter what they did, they were always going to be overshadowed, but it certainly hurts that we get maybe 15 seconds of 2B switching her sword and then the rest of the show will be still frames of her looking at stuff. The same thing happened with Persona 5, one of the most visually striking games of the 2010s. Of course it was going to look lifeless compared to a game that had more than 5 years to trial and error their way into a distinctive look. But at the same time, Nia has taken steps to create its own imagery. Despite my being a huge fan of Akihiko Yoshida and the fact that his designs were adapted beautifully for Makuya when the promised flower blooms, I think it's a good thing that character design designer Jun Nakai chose to make the cast of Nier look totally different from how we're used to seeing them. Not only does this establish a different visual identity, but it also helps when characters don't act exactly how we expect them to. But I'm kind of burying the lead here. The choppy action scenes, 2D characters barely moving while the 3D characters are overly smooth in comparison, the general declining quality that culminated in not one but two indefinite delays aren't because they're adapting incredible video game animation. It's because the anime industry insists on running the most fragile productions possible. Because hey, they make money anyway. <laughs> Winter was an eye-opening season, and by god I hope it's just as eye-opening for anime executives. But it wouldn't be the first time Aniplex, the producers of Nier's anime, failed to see the waste. In 2021 they worked with Bandai Spirits and Katakawa to adapt 86, an award-winning light novel with a dedicated fanbase. And to do so, they brought on Toshimasa Ishii, a young director with a strong track record as both a storyboard artist and assistant director, to steep the show in powerful visual storytelling. It resulted in a standout first core. I reviewed it for ANN and basically gave it 5 stars every week. But by the time we reached the second core, it was clear that the team was running behind. Or rather, that the production never gave them the chance to catch up. While it still had the great directing, shots would linger, characters would only move in long shots, and there ended up being so many delays that there was a gap of 3 months between episodes 21 and 22. Sound familiar? Last season, Aniplex delayed episodes of Nier Automata, Ayakashi Triangle, Unite Up, and The Misfit of Demon Academy 2, almost their entire slate, and it was always for the same stated reason. 
COVID. Now that's not necessarily that the teams at A1 Pictures, Connect, Cloverworks and Silverlink all simultaneously caught the virus, but rather that their productions were tenuous enough that without their outsourcing partners in China who were dealing with COVID outbreaks, they were unable to release episodes. It's like walking across a tightrope and getting surprised when a gust of wind blows you off. Sayakano's director even chimed in on Twitter to say that winter shows have always had trouble since it ends up running through the Lunar New Year, an occasion that many across Asia will take time off for. Aniplex isn't the only company facing these delays, but what's perhaps most annoying is that, like with 86, they assembled a genuinely exciting team to adapt Nier Automata. And this has been a consistent problem. Premium teams, but without premium schedules. Those whose teams are able to keep their creative spirit alive until it reaches the conclusion are the exception these days, not the rule. And they've been successes due to finding their own ways to deal with unreliable schedules. There's a version of Nier Automata that's not just reached episode 12, but hit a consistent series of highs. Episode 4 with action storyboards and direction from the brilliant Sword Art Online and Naruto Shippuden animator Kengo Matsumoto is the best the show has looked thus far. Even if the fight against Simone is interspliced with less than stellar shots, there's still stuff to gawk at, and it's the closest the animation team gets to mimicking Platinum Games' non-stop combos. Along with Matsumoto, they've also had stars like 86's Toshimasa Ishii and Sora Online's Tomohiko Ito joining the gang. But without the time to do what they do best, we just... Well, we don't get their best. The greatest episode so far has been episode 2 by the series director Ryoji Matsuyama. Filled with atmosphere, intrigue and melancholy, it's his way of saying, hey, just so you know, I am good at this. It's the episode that feels most like what Nier as a series embodies, and since it spends most of its time far from our two android protagonists, it ends up offering quiet empathy for the robots as they search for their reason for being. This would just be an overly long cutscene in a game, but it's the biggest thing the Nier anime does to justify its existence. Basically, it's fucking Kino. But sadly, we can't all be episode 2. At time of recording, episode 9 isn't even out yet, and it's been almost two months since episode 8. It's generally accepted that one of the paths to creating a successful show is airing 24 episodes back to back to build momentum. But not only is there an ever-decreasing number of shows that can manage 12 episodes sequentially these days, but there's an unsettling number that can't even fill their own time slots. It doesn't spell good tidings for a potential near-replicant adaptation. To be frank, video game adaptation is hard. These are largely stories and designs created for a 3D environment defined by player choice that then have to be mushed down into something that can fit on a television and costs way less money to make. Just one look at the 3D designs created in-house at A1 Pictures tells you that this wasn't anyone's ideal near anime. Even though, as I said before, it could have been. The teams are good. Yeah, even the CG guys have great works on their resume. Me. But, like with many careers the world over, bosses have a habit of not knowing how long it takes to create greatness. Thanks for watching The Canopy Effect, and apologies for the big gap in videos. I've got a new job now, so I've been working with new editors to keep the channel alive. Still in the process of adjusting, but thanks for bearing with us. And before I go, I'd like to thank these incredible people for supporting the channel. In particular, I'd like to thank Alan Baccaro, Austin Hardwick, Biopower, Chris Boylan, Dedemeet, Eddie Lehecker, Frizzy Canadian, Frogkun, Jacob Bosley, Jawburst, JR Pictures, Mike Tamborelli, My Own Mother, Ryland Taylor, Studioi, Tom Aman, and Tiago Nascimento. If you want more videos like this and to help keep the channel alive with us, then please visit patreon.com slash thecanoperfect.